Hello everyone. Uh, today I uh, decided to go and uh, share with you this uh, game I played. I was playing a lot of uh, chess correspondence and uh, decided to play an online game. And um, when this game was happening I got really nervous and scared and I thought to myself, am I doing myself a lot of good playing correspondence games or am I not doing uh, myself benefit? And it turned out that I think it's kind of helped and improved a little bit, taking that extra time to try to figure out what went wrong. And uh, in this uh, particular game, I found that uh, it was a really good game that I played. And uh, you can see that in uh, these um, depth and positional analysis and um, these will occur when um, the computer has uh, recommended a, uh, a better uh, move or a better line and um, uh, something that I can uh, look at or you know other people can look at and uh, you know, use the computer as a tool as to, okay, where did I go wrong? How could I improve? But don't just take the computer's word for it. You have to uh, try to figure out why the computer would uh, recommend that move. Sometimes it's not obvious, uh, which is fine. So uh, this game here, um, I played uh, the ready opening advanced uh, variation and this is something that I haven't played a lot. I was rated 16-16 and my opponent at the time was 15-20. So we'll start out with the ready opening F3 and we have uh, the uh, advanced uh, opening and from here um, the com not the computer my opponent could accept or decline uh, the uh, at the ready uh, advanced variation so we get into a decline And now from here, I did some uh, work in um, trying to figure out, okay, so what are the main continuations in this line? And here, as you can see, you know, you have a5, you can exchange the bishops, or you can bring the bishop back to e7. My opponent didn't do any of that and decided to play this move. And as you can see here, uh, my opponent did make an error, uh, which I won't get into. I'm only concerned with what I can do as an individual to improve. And um, I don't necessarily look at what potential um, things my opponent could do in order to improve in. Uh, that's just the way I've always kind of um, looked at these things. And I decided to do the exchange because after the exchange um, I have the check here which uh, forks the king and uh, also the knight at the same time. And that's why I had decided to play this move. This move I thought was pretty good because the knight can't come down to take uh, my knight because of the king uh, would be uh, open. So I'm using the tactic of uh, pinning uh, my opponent's piece to their king. And here my opponent breaks the pin. And 
and I played this move because I thought this would allow me to uh, stop my opponent's uh, pawn advancement. And here I've decided just to pick up the free pawn. And I had also considered uh, this move as well, coming up with a knight in order to uh, help defend uh, this square. Where I'd have the knight, the bishop, and the king. So I have three pieces defending uh, one piece, so my opponent would have to bring in more attackers. And here I was kind of confused as to what to do. I kind of felt I had to take the queen. And uh, then this became an issue for me. And I kind of felt like my opponent could come down with a rook on d8, I take this pawn, um, perhaps maybe after um, exchanging light square bishops. But when I had run through this um, scenario, if um, uh, black does take the light square bishop, then uh, my computer had recommended just pushing the pawn, attacking the, the knight. So if your opponent comes down to take, let's say, this pawn, uh, white is actually winning. And um, I had uh, made this move, as I said, I kind of feared uh, what was going on here. And at the time, I kind of felt like I needed to uh, defend my king, so that's what I had uh, ultimately chose to do. But uh, that being said, I did lose uh, a little bit. Now my computer was thinking for five minutes, and um, you'll see some crazy uh, depths where my computer will go, you know, 71 moves, 58 moves deep and still have a draw and um, like I said it was a really good game and um, here I kind of lost a little bit of uh, positional evaluation and my computer had recommended that uh, perhaps just taking um, the bishop would have been a lot better and as we can see here, 44 moves deep, and uh, uh, my computer thinks it's found a winning position. So we exchanged the, the bishops, and you know my uh, perhaps my pawn will come up and attack my opponent's knight. Since the knight is more valuable than a pawn, it makes sense for the knight to defend itself. And then my computer had recommended perhaps uh, castling uh, king side defending the king. And my opponent might uh, decide to push the pawn to f5. And I think uh, what my uh, computer is trying to uh, get at is maybe somehow trying to uh, come down with the pawns in order to maybe create a a pawn storm coming after my uh, pawn shield. So perhaps maybe after this move, my computer thought I might play a king f2. I'm helping to defend this pawn with my king. And uh, Perhaps my opponent would advance the g5 pawn, and again, I think to myself, well, maybe um, something like this, or, you know, maybe something like that. 
I think something like this would probably be better because if you go, I think if you go the other way with it, then my pawn comes up and now the knight is in jeopardy. Perhaps um, my computer had thought perhaps I'd uh, uh, develop the knight to a3 and uh, now what this does, now my rooks are um, activated on the back rank and perhaps my my opponent might advance a5 pawn maybe trying to stop me from um, advancing my pawns here but to me that doesn't make any sense because all I'm dealing with is one pawn coming down there is a possibility of the rooks coming over perhaps in order to assist this pawn and uh, my computer had uh, suggested uh, rook A to C1 if we go back to the move A5 I really don't know what's going on here I'm only hazarded, hazarding a guess that maybe you know maybe trying to block uh, at this pawn down here and then of course uh, there are these two pawns here which would probably prevent uh, this pawn from advancing uh, when we go to uh, rook a c1 I think the idea here is to exchange knights and then perhaps the rook would come up to take the knight um, you know, perhaps maybe that would be a possibility. And here in the game, um, you know, after my moves, I knew I was going to lose a pawn. And uh, I didn't think I was doing very well at this point in time. And I thought this was a really good move of my opponent. But um, I decided maybe to try to exchange knights. And now I have the problem of uh, defending uh, my pawn here. So I decided just to come over and uh, offer an exchange of rooks. And if not, at least I'm defending the pawn. And again, now my, uh, my rook is becoming overloaded, which means that it's doing um, two things at once. There's nothing else available in order to um, help with the um, defense. Overloading is considered a tactic. Um, that being said, you know, if you can overload a piece with multiple uh, assailants attacking multiple uh, squares, let's say, or pieces, uh, the piece be kind of becomes kind of uh, useless and redundant because it can't defend uh, both uh, sides of the board. And, well, not both sides of the board, but like, let's say, two pieces um, as you can see here and uh, my opponent might uh, come down and I thought that I'd have to worry about something like this you know my opponent you know um, putting more pressure on my C5, C5 pawn and, uh, you know, I have to be wary of my A2 pawn as well. And I thought, well, perhaps this was a move. And I got really excited because of what I had seen here. Attacking my opponent's king. Unfortunately, my opponent saw this. And uh, pushed the pawn 
And what this does is it allows my opponent an escape square uh, to run to. And uh, so I had opted to play this move and my computer didn't understand this move. And again, as you can see, you know, after uh, 45 moves deep, it's uh, kind of an even game uh, for both sides. However, my, my computer did recommend perhaps this was the better move. And uh, by doing this, uh, I am uh, blocking my opponent's king so it doesn't have that uh, escape square to go to. And also, too, I can attack um, this pawn as well and take, perhaps take the free pawn uh, sometime in the future. Unfortunately, I didn't do that and the game continued. I did think about perhaps coming here. At one point in time, I thought maybe this was a possibility, but it doesn't work out because now it just becomes an exchange of rooks. So we'll go back to the game. And uh, I played this move to attack my opponent's rook. And uh, now my rook is in uh, trouble. And this pawn here supports uh, the rook. So I can't, you know, exchange rooks because my whole idea is to uh, create a blockade so these pawns don't move. So I decided that I'd go after the pawn, maybe perhaps attacking my opponent's king. My opponent comes up to defend. And then I played this move. I wasn't really sure what to do at this point in time. I thought maybe perhaps um, offering an exchange of uh, rooks might be an idea. And again, I'm just trying to uh, figure out what to do next. I'm kind of lost right here. And with this move, uh, my computer thought this was kind of interesting. And my whole idea behind it was I want to put pressure on my opponent's king. But my computer, as you can see here, it really doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. We're still in an even game and I'm not really gaining any ground. But at the same time, I really wasn't sure what to do. And I had started spending a lot of time trying to figure out what to do next. And I was just at a loss, unfortunately. My computer did recommend perhaps this move would be better. And the reason being is now I'm forking uh, two pawns. Again, another uh, tactic attacking multiple uh, squares. And if my opponent comes up to defend one uh, piece, then the other piece falls. And uh, my uh, computer thought that maybe my opponent would do this, try to put pressure on my c5 pawn. And that being said, perhaps we'd have an exchange of rooks. But then I thought, well, then I have one, two, three pawns that I can attack. You know, uh, my opponent will try, if I come up, uh, to exchange rooks. This rook will come over and it has to move out of the way in order to advance the pawn. So I thought, well, maybe I could grab a couple of pawns uh, before I'd have to uh, guard against my opponent's pawn, trying to prevent it from 
uh, promoting. So all in all, as you can see, I'm doing not too bad. Uh, with this idea here, I wanted to come up and again uh, fork my opponent, the king and the pawn. So naturally, my opponent defends against us. Oops. Let's go back a little bit. Sorry about that. So it defends, and then I'm like, okay, uh, do I just go back and forth? Is this a draw? And um, I didn't take the I didn't take with the rook because now my opponent's rook comes over and now my uh, pawn is in jeopardy and these pieces can start uh, pushing forward and I kind of felt that that was maybe perhaps a bad move I didn't know what to do. <coughs> So I thought, okay, if my pawn falls, uh, maybe perhaps I would uh, be able to fork my opponent. And I had uh, decided to play this move. And, you know, trying to put direct pressure on my opponent's rook, which uh, really doesn't do much in hindsight, just because the rooks come over and support each other. But my computer did recommend this move here. And uh, I think to myself, I'm not too sure why my computer had recommended this because I'm thinking, you know, coming over here, coming down with my, uh, maybe my opponent would come down with their rooks and maybe um, try to checkmate me. But my computer recommended this and instead of uh, 61 moves deep and ending up with a draw, Uh, perhaps um, my uh, computer had recommended this and with the idea behind this move perhaps both of my opponent's rooks want to bear down on the f4 pawn perhaps I would come over and attack my opponent's king gaining a tempo my opponent would come up and uh, perhaps um, now I can uh, try to uh, defend my c4 pawn. Um, that being said, you know, um, if my opponent comes over, you know, the rook comes over, if the rook comes over to take the rook, then we have an exchange of rooks and my pawn will fall. Uh, so my computer had suggested that maybe perhaps this would be an idea uh, the rooks being exchanged and my opponent starts pushing the c5 pawn and I think the idea behind this is uh, my computer recommends perhaps trying to push this uh, pawn um, in order to maybe promote in future And um, coming down with a uh, coming down to defend the the rook, I don't think is an idea. But maybe perhaps the fact that my rook 
is on the same uh, file as my king in order to defend my king. I think maybe perhaps that's the idea of it. You know, and uh, also to uh, take uh, when my opponent perhaps might move back, then I have to worry about perhaps uh, losing the A2 pawn. So then it becomes, you know, I have the uh, C5 uh, pawn and perhaps the A7 pawn coming down. My computer had suggested maybe attacking my opponent's uh, pawn. My opponent might come over and uh, prevent me from uh, taking the pawn. Um, after all, you know, I think, as I said before, I think the idea is trying to take advantage and hopefully find a way in order to promote the pawn, maybe. And then my computer had recommended playing this move. And I'm not quite sure what this move intends, other than the fact that, you know, perhaps uh, preventing uh, the king from coming down here. So if the king did want to perhaps take these pawns, and now it becomes uh, the fact that now my opponent has to make even more moves uh, in order to come down here and uh, begin to uh, attack my, uh, my pawns. And uh, perhaps uh, my opponent might uh, move the king back, um, maybe trying to uh, aid in um, maybe helping out the rook at some point in time, or I'm not too sure. Um, you know, it does prevent. Um, me from pushing the pawn up. But we'll go back to the game. Like I say, some things my computer recommends I can sometimes figure out, sometimes not. So my opponent decided to play this move and as you can see here, I'm winning the game according to my computer and I decided to play uh, this move here. So I went from a winning position to a draw. Um, so my computer had suggested perhaps this uh, should have been the move, you know, maintaining pressure on my opponent, you know, preventing the king from coming over. And uh, my king does have a flight square uh, so if my opponent's rook comes over to check the king, then I just move over and kind of run away, uh, avoiding a checkmate down here. My opponent might uh, attack my weak square on uh, f2. I might come, uh, I might come over and defend my pawn, and now uh, the rook. I think the idea here is to put uh, more pressure on my F2 pawn. So my computer suggested uh, attacking my opponent's king. The king comes back in order to defend. Again, I attack the king and um, I feel as though this is um, an x-ray. Uh, it's a tactic uh, that people use sometimes and when this king moves away, in theory it's defending this pawn, so when it moves away I can take the pawn. So it's like an x-ray, you know how x-rays, uh, when you look at an x-ray and all those particles go through your body so the doctor can find out what your broken bones look like and stuff like that. The same sort of principle, you know, you're just taking a valuable piece and moving it out of the way in order to attack um, uh, another piece. 
so my opponent uh, defends the king and uh, now I have um, a threat of attacking two pieces of my opponent. My opponent might come over and uh, attack my king. I can move my king to safety. My opponent might push this move, uh, might play a5. Um, but just because uh, this rook is defending my king. So uh, perhaps uh, my computer didn't see any other moves and needed to make one, so let's push the a pawn. Perhaps I would come over and take the hanging uh, c6 pawn. My opponent might push uh, the a4 pawn. Again, my rook is defending my king. So perhaps uh, I might take the pawn. And now what we've done here is uh, my opponent has successfully moved me uh, out of the way in order to uh, get at what they want, which was uh, coming up here and attacking my king. And then I would have to come down and defend my uh, king somehow. So this move my computer thought was very confusing and again I went from a winning position to a uh, even uh, position. And I play, uh, my opponent played this move and I was I was in the point where I'm looking for a win, looking for a win. I kind of smelled blood in the water and I'm like, there's got to be a win here somewhere. And I wasn't quite sure what the win was. I did eventually lose this game. And I went back and had played it out on the board and I'm like, if I had made the move uh, Rook G3 check, I probably could have saved the game, which is what the computer had recommended. And uh, I played this move instead and my computer didn't understand this because now we have a mate in two, which is the Rook comes over, the King comes over, you know. And um, you know, the, the rook comes over again. Uh, or no. So there's a mate in two. Let's see if we can't figure this out. Because if my opponent plays this move. I come over here. Ah, uh, yes. So what's going on here is my opponent's king is blocking my flight square. So the rook comes over, the king moves over. The rook comes over, checkmate, because I can't move to this square. So my computer had recommended this move and again it's gone 70 moves deep in order to find an even position which is absolutely ridiculous so in this uh, position here I'm attacking my opponent's king so it has to be defended my opponent comes up to defend the king and I take the rook and then we have a uh, rook e2 check and I have to defend the king unfortunately I have to stand step back and now my pawn on g3 will fall and perhaps I come over and attack the rook rook can come over and attack my king now one thing I'd like to say too about uh, 
mating patterns is uh, let's say we only had these two pieces on the board. Uh, a king and a rook is a win and uh, you can uh, checkmate the king on the back rank. So perhaps I would move my king over and uh, my opponent would probably take my my pawn and now we have the threat of these two pawns uh, moving down to promote perhaps perhaps uh, maybe I would push my pawn up with the idea of promoting as well so now it's a foot race and now uh, my opponent would probably we take the hanging pawn and now I have one, two, three pawns to deal with. Now my position is getting pretty bleak. You know, I could come over and attack my opponent's hanging pawn and perhaps the king would come down. Uh, I think with the idea of trying to uh, deliver mate with the rook because right here my king is locked in and um, I can get out of it. Ideally, in a situation like this, let's say I was over here and moved to this square, then you would come down and you'd checkmate your opponent, which is ultimately how this uh, king versus a rook um, endgame uh, works out but instead my, uh, perhaps I come over and attack the king perhaps the king would come down so now um, these two pieces aren't um, there's still a threat to myself um, the rook is uh, blocking my path and it's just a matter of trying to position my opponent trying to position their king in such a way as I said before um, where um, in a position like this you know it would be just a matter of moving the rook down so perhaps I'd advance the pawn and now perhaps my opponent would uh, advance the king down with the idea of uh, coming over here and defending against uh, pawn promotion. So I have to move my king out of the way. The rook comes down and perhaps my uh, perhaps I would uh, take the pawn and I have to be careful of pawn, pawn promotion here and my rook is sort of pinned to this pawn right now but that being said I could probably take this pawn and then we would uh, probably battle it out in order to try to avoid this pawn from coming down and uh, try to avoid me from um, meeting my demise which happened anyways because my opponent made this move and uh, here we have a checkmate in two moves as I said before oh, sorry I just move everything over so the king is in check I move over my opponent has blocked this position and now uh, my opponent uh, develops Oh, sorry, delivers uh, checkmate and I can't get out of it. So as a whole, I thought I did pretty well. The only thing that um, I probably uh, failed to do um, was the fact that I had missed this move, which would have uh, helped me out. And uh, that being said, even in going as this far in the position if I played this 
I would probably have done a lot better, but um, I wasn't looking at what threats my opponent had. Checkmate hadn't even dawned on me yet, and that, that's another failing of mine. And um, it's just one of these things, you know, you look for your mistakes, you try to be aware of them, and when you play the next game, at least you know sort of what your failings were. And okay, so what did I do wrong in my last game that I should be doing in this game? Okay, I should be looking for my opponent's threats. You know, what threats do my opponent have that could um, circumvent what I'm trying to do? Um, is there a better move that I can uh, potentially make? And um, as we can see here, yeah, there was. There was this move here. And uh, I just, I had my blinders on and I wanted a win. And unfortunately, um, it got the better of me. But that being said, um, it was a good game. Uh, I've learned a lot. And as I've said, you know, this is a type of game that you could probably uh, spend a lot of time learning and you always learn something new and um, yeah I hope you've found this uh, video uh, fun and entertaining I hope you uh, join me in my next video um, and uh, thank you to everyone that's uh, liked and subscribed it does help uh, me to support the channel and I will be doing other uh, chess um, uh, videos as well, chess tactics, strategies, and I use my own game as uh, uh, an example. So um, I, look forward, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.